What's up everybody? Dr. Ryan Weaver here again today for our spinal workshop. It's open mic. So what that means is a varying health topic that Dr. Helms, my team and I uh, have really kind of caught in the uh, mainstream media. Maybe you've heard it uh, amongst coworkers. If you have kids, definitely with them. But what we're going to be talking about today is forward head posture. The pandemic of forward head posture. We see it all around uh, because it's so common, it really doesn't stand out to us. And really what forward head posture uh, can affect is going to open your eyes in just a moment. So again, the spinal workshops, we do these to continue to educate our patients, also our community, uh, and how they can improve their health and how chiropractic can help them as well. So let's dive into this. And you probably see uh, or have seen this screen or something like this um, in, in the media, forward head posture, where you're seeing that individuals staring at their cell phones in this case um, but what effects that has and we're going to reference some uh, cool research articles here in a moment that also can affect even our breathing and respiratory function so the image behind me and one of the most common things that dr jake and i see in our office is forward head posture so from the side view that our ears should be over our shoulders and what we start to see is everything rounding forward from our head, our shoulders round forward, just like this image back here. Now, you'll see a few references here of uh, degrees in terms of angles from zero all the way up to 60, and then you'll see a weight behind that. And what that is comparing is the degree, the angle of our cervical spine relating to pounds of pressure that is back on our spine, our top of our shoulders because those muscles are trying to pour our head back. And that can cause a lot of degeneration to occur prematurely uh, in younger and younger patients that I see. And the sad thing about that, and you've heard this through many spinal workshops, is you may not have symptoms yet. And we know the lack of symptoms does not mean that we're healthy. So bringing this up here and what we see uh, in practice as well, are even our youngest, you know, 10 to 12 years old, and we see, you know, that this is normal for them. Now, one of the things I'm going to reference in a moment, um, the slang term, you could call it military neck, where the, the spine is actually really straight up and down here, and the effects that that has as well. But you heard me mention um, some research that we saw in, in some recent seminars. <clears throat> so the normal curve in our neck is called a lordotic curve. So cervical lordosis and neck complaints. And this study um, done by JMPT in 2005, subjects with a loss of cervical lordosis experienced increasing amounts of neck pain. Neck pain most common. Again, you could probably justify other things such as headaches as well. And subjects with completely straight necks, the military necks that I just referenced earlier, are 18 times more likely to have neck pain versus those with normal lordosis. Now again, that wasn't comparing the individuals with hypolordosis. <clears throat> Another study here, the loss of cervical lordosis causing stretching and pulling of the spinal curve, uh, excuse me, spinal cord and nerves. They actually uh, had a cadaver that they showed the effect of the spinal cord. So sticking with me on this, if we lose that curve in our neck, it's going to pull our spinal cord and those nerves taut. Okay? Again, that irritates a lot of the surrounding tissue, those nerves. Therefore, we may have a lot more symptoms. So the other thing, respiratory muscles. How about that? This is another study that we found in research. Our respiratory muscles, someone with hypo cervical lordosis, so again, somebody who looks like this, that was more difficult and they had less lung volume in breathing than somebody who had a nerve, uh, normal cervical curve. So again, if we have those normal curves of our spine how they should be, it even allows our lungs and our breathing to me will be more effective and efficient. So when you think about that critically, well, if I don't have to work as hard to breathe and I can get more oxygen in, well, one could speculate, 
maybe our heart rate's lower, our respiratory rate is obviously lower, we get more oxygen in our body, and we don't have to work as hard. So thinking of that, and we can apply that to even sports performance as well. If it's easier to breathe, everything's better. So, you know, this image should be in your head. You know, when you're out in public and you maybe, again, you see this all the time, but it doesn't stand out to you until you, you know, see one of us point this out. Um, and again, we see it all the time. So, what my call to action for you is, you know, check, your, check yourself. Check your kids. Have your uh, spouse or significant other say, hey, you know, take a picture of me from front to back and from the side to look to see, indeed, is our uh, shoulder and ears in alignment? Are we way out in front of ourselves? We kind of have the rounded shoulders. And have that analyzed. <clears throat> and if, you know, you don't have anybody to, or if you find that, you know, give us a call. Have, you know, a chiropractor in your area. Again, however far this video uh, reaches to Columbus, to different states, you know, have your spine checked. Again, continue to kick the can down the road, so to say, is just going to make the problem worse. And then that could lead us to degeneration, degenerative joint, disc disease, osteoarthritis, and our spine. And again, the issues continue to stack up. So I hope you found this informative. You know, one of the things you can do at home, keep your shoulders back, keep your head upright. If you work at a desk, you know, desk job ergonomics is one of the spinal workshops that we do. Um, and again, in proper setup, just kind of how you see this table here, if I rest my hands, they're not really pulling me forward. Your desk should support your arms. I love standing desks, so if you do uh, work at an office for a career, think about having a standing desk. So I hope that you found this informational and educational, and I hope that you are proactive and uh, make a call to your chiropractor and, uh, and get some of your spinal health analyzed and checked. So we look forward to seeing you in our next spinal workshop. Hope you have a lovely day and stay healthy.